Life is unpredictable. You can do all the right things, like go to school, get married, have some children, and still end up in severe debt, divorce, with your dumbass kids only calling you up when they need to renew their Crunchyroll subscription. The fact is, nobody wants to struggle, but everyone is bound to encounter some sort of difficulty in their lives, and some people never make it out of those bad times. Hamizu is a manga that explores inevitable tragedy. Created by Minoru Furuya, the story focuses on characters that are on the edge of society and shows you how easy it is for children to slip through the cracks. This is a very dark manga which will pull at your heartstrings and make you wonder what really goes on inside someone's head. What is the average person capable of doing when pushed into a corner? Yuichi Sumida is a 15-year-old boy with an extremely nihilistic attitude. He's introduced as a pretentious know-it-all who doesn't actually know it all. Immediately, you hate Sumida. He sputters nonsense about living an average life, not trying to be special, a lot of philosophical horseshit that would obviously come out of a ninth grader's mouth. His friends, I use that term loosely here, are also equally as unbearable. Rambunctious, idiotic, with sniveling expressions and living in delusion, these young boys really set the tone for what's about to come. Topics such as, can your soul be bought? Should you pursue manga for the passion or for the fame and fortune? What sacrifices would you make for a friend are all presented very early into this manga. For a four volume series, I was very surprised by how much ground is covered and how realistic it all feels. I know Poon Poon is popular with manga readers, but I personally feel that Himizu is a better story. Now, I was definitely more entertained by Goodnight Poon Poon, but Himizu is so much stronger with building on similar tropes. Within the first volume, the reader has to quickly accept the fact that this series is going to go in a very bleak direction right away. The pacing doesn't betray that assumption, as you see our main cast getting involved with predators, being abandoned by their parents, and getting caught up with street criminals. There's a lot of sexual abuse in this manga, by the way, and it doesn't shy away from very tense moments that lead to very violent assaults as well, which is part of what makes me appreciate this series more than Poon Poon. It treats these characters with respect and leads them to believable situations for their unfortunate mistakes. The art for this manga is pretty solid. It isn't fancy, there is no layout manipulation, but it frames the psychological elements very well by morphing the characters gradually as the series progresses. It starts off very sketchy, with a 90s erratic art, early 2000s surrealism take. Harold Sequishi, Jamie Hewlett, Carlos Meglia, and Mike Judge are comparable in style to what I see from Furuya, which makes sense as Himizu is a manga from the turn of the century. But it never feels dated, as the issues the characters encounter are all replicated in psychological seinen manga of today. Sumida is left behind by his mother to take care of the family boat shop and deal with his absentee father's debts. From here, note how the stress starts to affect him. He's drawn more and more gauntly as time goes on. The reader is experiencing the character's mental decline and aftermath after losing what little family they had. The art, along with this story, becomes more disarrayed with each chapter. The story becomes tough to read as Sumida tries his best to cope without any support. He drops out of school, starts working odd jobs, and begins engaging in activities that are leading him down a path to his doom. And some of his friends aren't doing much better. His girlfriend Chizawa is clearly one of those damaged girls who thinks she can fix criminal bad boys. And the host starts inserting herself into this cesspool because she feels bad for him. Fucking Noodle gets caught up in serious crimes and finds himself doing things that ultimately destroys his friendship with Sumida. 
A few of the other friends, whatever their fucking names were, I forget, actually continue onto their respective dreams and start to see positive results from their hard work and own accountability. It's painful to watch Sumida throw his life away. This manga feels very timely because all of the mass shootings lately. It's a very difficult conversation to have, but I do ultimately believe that it starts from home. And authoritative figures need to be more involved and proactive when they notice red flags. I think of the number of times that Sumida could have been saved if only he had real guidance. The kid is a smartass and seeks the advice that is most convenient for him. You feel so frustrated as a reader because you want to walk up to the kid and fucking shake him. Just really let him know that there's so much more to life than feeling bad for yourself and wandering around trying to look for trouble. Even the adults he chooses to surround himself with are the most evil, crazed of people. A very captivating and also horrifying moment in this manga is when Sumida seeks counsel from a stranger, a fucking bum. He likes what he hears and decides to hire him at the boat shop and give him housing. But little does Sumida know, this hobo does anything but repay his kindness. The only reason this dude is kicking around anyway is because some 15 year old kid had no proper sense of judgment, he had no guidance. Sumida can't discern danger from comfort or accountability versus rationality. Hamizu closes out with a very taxi driver-esque way of perceiving this world. It all feels very counterculture, almost North American at times. It's a grittiness that we very rarely see in Japanese works. High school dropouts, gun violence, exploitation, depression, and plenty of others on the outskirts of society. You're left asking a lot of questions. Were any of these characters redeemable? Will the criminals of this manga ever get their comeuppance? The adults that have harmed children. Surely, they'll be brought to justice, right? The whole time reading, I enjoyed myself because I kept asking all of these questions. How will it all come together? But as I came to the ending, I realized that, just like in real life, you aren't always meant to get an answer. And most times, the bad guy wins. Himizu is an excellent psychological drama that can be read in a single sitting. It has very few flaws and tells a fantastic coming-of-age story for those that society leaves behind. I related to some of this story, and though it was an edge fest, it never felt forced or fake. You want to see these characters rise above their hurdles and trauma, and while some do, the story elevates to amazing highs when you see the rest of the cast slump deeper and deeper into a lost life. There is nothing more humanizing than seeing a 15-year-old boy cry himself to sleep at night knowing that his best days have already passed him. I'm giving Himizu a 7 out of 10.